Welcome to Menopause and You Chat with a Physician, sponsored by Women's Health Source. Today we have the benefit of speaking with Dr. Lisa Friedman, a family practice specialist with Bryn Mawr Hospital. Dr. Friedman will be speaking with us today about the importance of vitamins and minerals in keeping our bodies healthy. Can you tell us how the nutritional needs change in a menopausal woman and in a woman in her postmenopausal years? Nutritional needs change in the menopause and postmenopausal years because as we age, our stomach acids decrease and we need our stomach acids to absorb all our nutrients. Therefore, all our vitamins and mineral needs increase in the menopause and postmenopausal years. Specifically, there's many diseases that are very common in the menopause and postmenopausal years. These diseases are osteoporosis, heart disease, strokes, thinning hair, brittle nails, teeth problems, forms of cancer, and some forms of dementia. Can you tell us which nutrients are important? The most important nutrients in the menopause and postmenopausal years are calcium, vitamin D, copper, antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, soy, fiber, and biotin. Would you explain the health benefits of the nutrients that you mentioned? Sure, I'll start with calcium. Calcium is very important for bone formation, thus preventing the brittle bone disease osteoporosis. In childbearing years, you need about 1,000 milligrams of calcium a day. However, in the menopause and postmenopause years, if you're not on hormone replacement, you need about 1,500 milligrams a day. And if you are on hormone replacement, you need about 1,200 milligrams a day. The best sources for calcium are dairy products, such as cheese, milk, and yogurt. However, if you're lactose intolerant, you could drink orange juice fortified with calcium, eat sardines and salmon out of a can, or almonds. The next nutrient would be vitamin D. Vitamin D works with calcium in the formation of bone and thus preventing osteoporosis. 800 IUs a day is necessary for the bone formation and one glass of milk has about 100 IUs. Also with osteoporosis, we need copper, which is a mineral. This is an unknown mineral that's utilized in building collagen, with, which helps with bone formation. Copper is found in oysters, blackstrap molasses, and chocolate, so everyone will be happy to know that chocolate is good for you. You mentioned antioxidants. How are they important? Antioxidants are very important for the postmenopausal woman. First, let me give you an example of what antioxidants are. They're vitamins A, C, and E. They're very important in killing free radicals. Free radicals damage the body's cells and tissues, and these lead to many diseases. Heart disease, some forms of dementia, some forms of cancer, and even some eye diseases. Antioxidants are found commonly in most fruits and vegetables, especially squashes, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, oranges, and berries. What about the omega-3 fatty acids, fiber, and soy? I'll start with the omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are very popular now. They're found in fish that swim in cold waters and also in fish oils. They're good for the prevention of heart disease. Next, fiber. Fiber is also very good for the prevention of heart disease and also prevents colon cancer. We need about 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day. Fiber can be found in almost any fruit, vegetable, or whole grains. And finally, the soy. Soy is also called a phytoestrogen. So as we know in menopause, our main symptoms are hot flashes. And the phytoestrogen from soy can really help prevent the hot flashes. Examples of soy are miso soup, tempeh, and tofu. How does the biotin help? Biotin is very helpful for more the aesthetic signs of aging that goes along with menopause and postmenopause. Biotin deficiencies can affect our skin, giving us dry, wrinkled skin. It can also affect our teeth, giving us dental problems. It can affect our nails and give us dry, cracked nails. And it can also affect our hair and give us thinning hair. Biotin is commonly found in egg yolks, most fishes, also in royal jelly and rice bran. Is it better to get the nutrients and vitamins through foods or supplements or a combination of the two? Ideally, it would be best for a woman to get all her nutritional needs by eating foods. However, 
A person would have to eat large quantity of all the foods I mentioned in order to get all the nutrients from the foods. So that is pretty impossible. So for my patients, I usually suggest that they try to eat as many of the foods I'd mention along with taking the appropriate supplements. And I do advise everyone to consult with their own physician as to their own specific nutritional needs. Also, try to remember just to enjoy eating healthy. Dr. Friedman, thank you so much for being with us today and providing such valuable information. Thank you very much for having me.